This is Bradley Powell from Westside Auto Works. Yes, we have officially changed the name. Today I'm going to do a video on paper of a chain bridge and how it works. This is a lengthy process. I can't really do a hands-on video at the moment. I don't even have a car to do a hands-on video on. But I can show you here what it is, how it works, and the principles of it. Before we get started, I want to say I recommend, unless you can weld really, really good, I do not suggest doing this at a home. These chain bridges are under a lot of pressure. If they were to break, something's getting damaged. These cylinders are going through the rear deck. On some vehicles, the cylinder would go through the rear glass. You don't want any unnecessary damage because you want to try something at home in your backyard. So these right here are the, basically of what it is and how it works. So if you need to get someone to do it, they're not that hard to do, actually pretty easy. You just gotta be able to weld really good. All right, basically, you need a three pump setup at least because you gotta be able to hit your power three wheel on your cylinders. What it is, you'll have a piece of C-channel going in between the frame rails of the car. This is underneath the car looking at it. So, you know, you'll have your frame rails here. That'll be in between. The distance here, the width of the bridge is typically six to seven inches because you gotta have a spring to go over it. You gotta do a coal over setup. You need at least a 14 inch stroke cylinder. Anything less, you won't be able to get a good three wheel. Uh, you'll still be able to do it, but you won't have any lock up in the back. It'll, and the three wheel won't even be that high. This is one way to do the bridge. There is another way, I'll show that as well. So run at least a 14 inch cylinder. Uh, I run about a two to two and a half ton spring. That's good. You don't really want to run anything less than that because it's going to start to collapse before you get your stroke because these are going to be under a lot of pressure. Run your power balls or if you want to do it old school, you can just do the regular square tubing and drill a hole through the shaft of your cylinder. Use a grade eight bolt. Okay, right above your rear end, you have two pieces of square tubing enough to uh, run the chain through. That distance here is in between four to five inches, about a hand length. You'll come straight down and about four, maybe to six inches on each side of the differential, you'll weld another piece of square tubing that has a hole in it that you also run a bolt through. Your chain will go from this perch to this perch. Most cars run about a 14 inch link on the chains on each one. If you have higher strokes, 16 inch strokes on up, you can run more stroke. I have did 21 lengths on a Caprice, but he was running 28 inch telescopics. So he had a massive lockup and a massive three wheel. So 14 lengths is about average for a chain bridge of this degree running a 14 inch cylinder. You can adjust these depending on how much three wheel you want. If you want to maximize three wheel, sometimes these need to be shorter. Sometimes they need to be longer. So that's something you just have to play with. The distance here in between the frame rails depends on the vehicle. I don't know right off what length you would need for your particular car. I have did some chain bridges, but they've all been different lengths. But basically it'll be on the inside of the frame. A side view of that, this will be a side view. So that'd be the piece of C channel here. Springs going up through it. And then of course your rear end will be right here. Outside you wouldn't even be able to see any of this because your frame rails will cover all this. So you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even see any of this from the outside. So that would be a side view. All right. Do not do a chain bridge without reinforcing this rear end. There are a lot of reinforcements out there. I prefer the old school method, which is the ladder bridge. Basically, you will get it to about two inches of square tubing. I build perches like this right underneath the cylinders, and these can be anywhere in between. I like to do them close to the hedgehog, and basically you will have a piece of square tubing that goes straight across. Just like that. This will be notched out because this will actually be butted up against the rear end and that'll be welded as well right underneath the hedgehog. So that'll be up a little bit closer. I just went in and did it like that so you can kind of see what it is. That's called a ladder bridge. You see a lot of people. Let me erase this. You see a lot of people nowadays they're doing the the fan bridges where they'll come down like that. Well it's a little uneven. They'll come down like that you know, and then chrome all that out or whatever, and it looks nice. Still holds up, it's good and strong, but the lighter bridges, I trust that a lot more. 
there is another way you can do it and I had my setup on a Monte Carlo done like this as well as the bridge so I'm gonna get rid of these how I had it done was run a single perch right above the differential and I had another perch welded on the differential running my chain here going into my perch. I was running 10 links here with a 14 inch cylinder and a full stack of two tons. My rear end I had reinforced that I got two pieces of angle iron on each side. Just two pieces of angle iron and I had them together like this on my rear end. So basically when you looked at my rear end it was no longer round it was square. And I'd welded one here and then I, did, I flipped one and did it on the other side. I welded perches here here, here, and here. And they did the same thing over here. That's how I had that rear end reinforced. That way it was reinforced all the way around. It couldn't bow up here, couldn't bow down here. And this right here was completely reinforced. I have seen people do bridges without reinforcing that rear end. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna last five or six months and you're gonna start replacing axles inside that rear end if you're lucky enough without it rainbowing out. No lie, I have seen rear ends that looked like this. They have completely mushroomed and look like a rainbow where they just bent and the tires were sitting like that because no reinforcement whatsoever. So I encourage reinforce that rear end whether you got a bridge or not, reinforce that rear end. That's a lot of pressure on those rear ends having the cylinders in there with no reinforcement at all. If anything you can just do what I did here and just block block those in really helps. So this is another way you can do it here. Like I said, that width in between here is about six or seven inches. And the length of the bridge itself, it's unsure. I, I can't tell you how much that is. It depends on the vehicle. Run no less than a 14 inch stroke. Run no less than a two ton spring. That way it won't try to collapse when you're trying to jack it up. And as far as the chain goes, you just have to play with that and length it out. Like I said, I'm an 86 Monte Carlo. I was doing the same setup right here. I was running 10 inches of chain because I was gaining some height here. That's why I was able to run 10. Down here, you're gaining about three lengths. So up here, I was able to minimize some lengths. And I had a high lockup and a massive three wheel. So that's the way I had it on my Monte Carlo. And... It's just a little bit easier way to do it. So there it is. Anybody wants to try it, good luck with it. Like I said, it's not that hard to do, but these right here, they need to be welded in really well. And it'll help on G-bodies. Everybody knows that it has owned a G-body. They're bad about buckling in the quarters. This right here will stop that if you do it before you juice the car. So this is the chain bridge. That's how it works. And actually, it's not how it works. I'll explain how it works. That's how it's set up. We'll go back to here, to the purchase. Real quick. All right, what happens on a chain bridge? If you got the car all the way down, this is how they work. You got the car all the way down, you start jacking up this one cylinder. That's why you need a minimum of three pumps so you can have individual rears. You start jacking up this cylinder, this chain's going to get tight. It's going to max out and it's going to get tight. The cylinder here, or this one, whichever, we're just going to go with this one, still has some stroke left on it. This chain right here will be lamp, of course, because this side of the car is the only side coming up. What happens is when this chain gets tight and you still have stroke left, the force has got to go somewhere. So what happens is it forces the opposite front wheel to come off the ground, which I don't mean the opposite corner. I'm going to mean this side here. So if you're jacking up the left side, your left tire is going to come off the ground. If anybody has ever taken a jack and put underneath a car, if anybody's ever taken a jack and put it underneath a car, like let's say in the back to jack up the back, you start noticing the front coming up too. That's the same principle as a chain bridge. That's what happens. You're forcing that front wheel off the ground because it has nowhere else to go. So that's what I was saying earlier. These things are under a lot of pressure because if these perches would break, chain would break, bolt would break, this bridge would break, something is going somewhere. That chain's going to fly out and slap something and do some damage, slap the gas tank, 
this bridge is going to go through the car, these cylinders are going to shoot out, something's going to happen because that is some massive pressure that are on these chains when you've got that car locked up in three wheel. So that's what I was saying earlier, if, if, unless you can weld phenomenal, I don't suggest trying this at home. Just get somebody to do it that can weld and that you trust and you should be golden. So these are the basic principles, it's how it works. Like I said, there's two different ways to do it. I encourage to reinforce that rear end regardless. And if anybody has any questions or wants to buy some of this artwork, because I know that that's, that's nice. If you want to buy some of this artwork, you can let me know. Or if, seriously, if you have any questions, just let me know. Like I said, I wish I could do a hands-on video on some of this stuff, but it's really difficult to do a hands-on video and very lengthy process to do a hands-on video on something to this measurement. So if you have any questions, just ask. I'll try to answer the best I can. And I appreciate all the people watching and subscribing. Thanks, and have a good day.